Iraq's army and Shia militias are attacking ISIS forces this morning in the western part of the country. The new military operation will try to drive ISIS out of Anbar province and retake the key city of Ramadi. The offensive comes just two days after the U.S. Defense Secretary blasted Iraqi soldiers. Vice President Joe Biden says the United States will stand with Iraq in its fight against ISIS. Biden telephoned Iraq's prime minister on Monday. The vice president prayed to Iraqi forces for their sacrifice and bravery. CBS News national security analyst Juan Zarate is in Washington. Good morning, Juan. Good morning, Charlie. Let me begin with the retaking of Ramadi. Is it possible if there's a combination of Iraqi soldiers and uh, Shia militias? It's possible. What you see the Iraqis trying to do is cobble together enough forces, both Sunni and Shia paramilitary forces, in addition to Iraqi forces, to try to take back Ramadi. I think much of this, though, Charlie, is face-saving. Uh, they realize this is a major setback, psychologically damaging to their forces and internationally, and so they have to announce something. Whether or not this is possible in the near term is really uh, to be seen, but I think it's going to be a real challenge to take back Ramadi, just like it's been a challenge to take back other territory from the Islamic State. Juan, what about, you know, we saw the defense secretary, Ash Carter, say, sort of blame this fall of Ramadi on, he said, it was the lack of will to fight by the Iraqi ar uh, army. But the Wall Street Journal has a story today that says, wait a minute, look, ISIS executed a very sophisticated battle plan. They're highly adaptable, even outwitting even U.S. special forces. Well, it's no doubt, uh, Nora, that the Islamic State has been adapting to the pressure uh, it's been under. They've been reinforcing their troops out of uh, Syria. They've been retaking territory. They control a third of Syrian territory, a third of Iraqi territory. And what the Iraqis are saying is that they held territory for weeks, but they faced a major onslaught of suicide attacks and new tactics from the Islamic State that allowed them to be overwhelmed. And, and really, this is a, a moment of reflection because the Islamic State uh, continues to grow in its influence and con controls vast swaths of territory. And the reality is they're adapting to the pressure. So much of the debate right now has been centered on the strategy in, in Iraq. Should we be focusing on Syria, Ron? Well, part of the challenge is that you have the problem of uh, ISIS in Iraq, but clearly they control territory and have a, a safe haven in Syria. And you have to deal with both territories if you're going to solve the problem. The reality is we have a strategy to degrade and destroy the Islamic State. For now, it looks like at best we're trying to contain the, the threat. And the problem, of course, is it's not just a problem in Iraq and Syria, but it's also a movement that's gaining momentum and allegiance around the world in places like Libya and even as far as Nigeria. And so this is a real global problem. Do we have a strategy or do we need a new strategy? Charlie, I, need, I think we need to execute the strategy we've announced, which is to accelerate the support we're giving to our proxies with forces and with even targeteers uh, on the front lines. We have to rethink our strategy, though, because the threat is actually adapting perhaps more quickly than we're able to deal with. All right. Juan Sarati, thank you for joining us this morning.